Listen, everybody, to the words I have to say. Better get ready. This is Daniel White IV, and for my father, Daniel White III, with the Second Coming Watch Sunday Roundup for July 20th, 2014. On the Roundup, we feature the top 10 prophecy-related news stories that happened this past week, which point toward the Second Coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the end of the world as we know it. First, according to the Los Angeles Times, fighting intensified and casualties mounted on Sunday as Israel put more soldiers on the ground and pushed deeper into Gaza and heavy shelling drove the death toll higher while ceasefire efforts floundered. The fiercest shelling struck the eastern neighborhoods of Gaza City, where 50 civilians were killed and 200 more injured early on Sunday. Dozens more casualties were feared, trapped in areas that ambulances could not access, and a two-hour ceasefire was secured to allow medical teams to evacuate the victims. At least 100 militants have been killed since Thursday, when Israel began the ground phase of its military offensive, now in its 13th day. Five Israeli soldiers were killed and 55 injured. Second, according to USA Today, President Obama said the United States has increasing confidence that the missile that shot down a Malaysian jetliner came from Russian separatists in Ukraine, and that Russia bears some responsibility for the crisis. In his first extensive remarks on the passenger jet crash, Obama said evidence indicates that the plane was shot down by a surface-to-air missile from an area that is controlled by Russian-backed separatists inside Ukraine. A group of separatists can't shoot down military transport planes, or they claim fighter jets, without sophisticated military equipment, and that comes from Russia. Third, according to Reuters, Iran and six powers agreed to continue talking for four more months after failing to meet a July 20th deadline to reach a deal on curbing the Iranian nuclear program in exchange for ending sanctions, enabling Tehran to access $2.8 billion of frozen cash. But U.S. officials warned that most sanctions against the Islamic Republic would remain in place. The announcement came in the early hours of Saturday, after nearly three weeks of marathon talks in Vienna, where senior officials from Iran, the United States, Great Britain, France, Germany, Russia, and China were holed up in negotiating rooms struggling to reach an agreement. Fourth, according to AFP and Israel National News, a rocket likely fired from Gaza hit Egypt's Rafah border crossing with the embattled Palestinian enclave on Saturday, wounding one soldier. An official said the rocket was most likely from Gaza and fell into Egyptian territory by mistake. An estimated 1,600 rockets have been fired from Gaza since Operation Protective Edge began 13 days ago. The IDF has confirmed at least 1,497 have landed in Israel. Fifth, according to NBC News, the U.S. Geological Survey has released new data showing that earthquake risks have increased for numerous locations across the United States. New science shows these areas are among many geologic hotspots with greater threats for heavier earthquakes than once believed. The updated seismic hazard map lists 16 states with a relatively high likelihood of experiencing damaging ground shaking. These states are Alaska, Arkansas, California, Hawaii, Idaho, Illinois, Kentucky, Missouri, Montana, Nevada, Oregon, South Carolina, Tennessee, Utah, Washington, and Wyoming. Six, according to Al Jazeera, the Islamic State group has threatened Christians in the Iraqi city of Mosul with death if they do not convert to Islam or pay a tax. The Sunni rebel group issued the orders after Friday prayers. The document states that the order was issued after Christian leaders failed to attend a meeting called by the group. In response, the group says in the letter that Christians must either convert to Islam, pay a special tax on non-Muslims known as jizya, or face death as a last resort. Seventh, according to The Blaze, Pastor John MacArthur of Grace Community Church in California recently reacted to denominations such as the Presbyterian Church USA that have taken more liberal approaches to homosexual marriage, among other issues, saying they have no allegiance to the Bible. He described them as false churches that fail to teach biblical truths. 
MacArthur said if you go back to every one of those seminaries, for a century they have been deniers of biblical authority. They have no relationship to scripture. They are the apostate church. They are Satan's church. Eighth, according to the Alger Minor, as Israel continues its ground invasion of Gaza to liberate Hamas of its long-range rockets, the size and scope of the Israel Defense Forces ranks 11th in the world. An index created by Global Firepower was originally published in April, but has been referred to by Business Insider and Israel's Globe's Business Daily this week to give readers a more background on the IDF's capabilities. In terms of global ranking, the top five armies in the world are in the US, Russia, China, India, and the UK. The next five are France, Germany, Turkey, South Korea, and Japan. Compared to its neighbors in the Middle East, Israel at number 11, Bess, Egypt, Iran, Syria, Algeria, the United Arab Emirates, Yemen, Morocco, Tunisia, Jordan, and Iraq. Ninth, according to the Christian Post, a Kurdish government official has predicted that Iraq could break apart into three separate states in response to the extremist Islamic group ISIS, which declared an Islamic state in Iraq and Syria. Karim Sanjari, Minister of Interior for the Kurdish region, said Baghdad seems to be pushing us into that direction, and we're closer than ever. Tenth, according to the Jerusalem Post, Pope Francis telephoned Israeli President Shimon Peres on Friday to ask him to deliver a message of peace to the people of Israel and the region as a whole. The Pope called on everyone to exercise restraint and to strive for peace in the face of the Gazan crisis. He called the conflict a very painful moment as he referred to the joint prayer in which Perez, Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas, and spiritual leaders of the Jewish, Christian, and Muslim faiths had joined him in a prayer for peace at the Vatican in the first week of June. Perez told the Pope that Israel knows that the firing of rockets was started by a group of fanatics and not by the people of Gaza. The Bible says in Matthew 16:27, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Our second coming quote for today is from Alexander McLaren. He said, The apostolic church thought more about the second coming of Jesus Christ than about death in heaven. The early Christians were looking not for a cleft in the ground called a grave, but for a cleavage in the sky called glory. You can read these stories in more detail and get more prophecy-related news at secondcomingherald.com. If you are not ready for the return of Jesus Christ, may I encourage you to get ready today by receiving Him as your Savior. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead by the power of God for you so that you can live eternally with Him. Pray and ask Him to come into your heart today, and He will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Keep looking up, for your redemption draweth not. Let us join in the prayer of John the Revelator. Even so come, Lord Jesus. Don't let it be said.